Howdy gang, it's Professor H with another networking hands-on video. A little while ago I did one for you on wired networking devices and so I thought I'd follow it with a wireless networking device video. So what I'm going to talk about right now is our friend the Cisco 1242 AP. It's a fairly common AP, although a little dated, uh, because it doesn't do 802.11n, but it'll certainly serve to illustrate some of our points today, and we've got some other APs anyway. All right, so I sometimes ask students to tell me about this AP, and invariably they tell me that it's got a wireless interface, a console, and a fast Ethernet interface. And that's true, but what they're forgetting is that there are actually two wireless interfaces and an internal virtual interface with, that we use for management called the BVI. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the wireless interfaces themselves. We'll notice that these two antennas, okay, are closer together than these two guys here. And the reason for that is that they're actually two different interfaces and they deal with two different sets of frequencies. We'll start with this guy here. This distance apart puts them in the 2.4 gigahertz range. And we know that because this distance is actually about one wavelength. Now that goes back to our diversity antennas. Diversity antennas are there to better pick up signals from the clients. And they're one wavelength apart so they don't interfere with each other. So when we look at this spacing compared to this spacing here, we see that these two guys are closer together. This distance tells me that they're 5 gigahertz. Well, how did I know that? Well, as you go up in frequency, you actually have a wavelength that gets shorter and shorter and shorter. So, when you're looking at antenna interfaces and you're comparing them, this guy here is going to be a lower frequency than these here. And in fact, if we look at the antennas for these guys, here's a 2.4 gigahertz antenna, and here's a 5 gigahertz antenna. So you can see that the frequency that you're dealing with actually determines your physical characteristics of your radiators. All right. Now, the 2.4 gigahertz uh, interface is actually called, when you're consoling in and configuring the device, dot eleven radio zero, or int D0 for short. This guy over here is interface dot eleven radio one, or D1 for short. So 5 gigahertz side, 2.4 gigahertz side. Now we've got our Ethernet side here, we've got our console, and then we've got our power. Usually, what we want to avoid is the need to use that power port, because that means that I have to find a, an outlet for it. So what we prefer to do is find a power over Ethernet enabled switch and use that to power up this AP. All right. So you notice a couple of other ones here. Now the um, this AP is actually got a little bit of weight to it, and that means that we've actually got a couple of radios in here that's that sort of adding to the weight. And that makes this guy a fat AP because those radios are backed up by processor and memory, so this AP can make all of its decisions on its own. Access control, encryption, all of that stuff made right here on the AP. Now that makes this AP a fat AP. Here is an example of an 802.11 FAT AP. So 802.11 N actually is what I should have said and the dead giveaway here is that we've got three antennas. So this is the MIMO interface but really what we've got here is different physical interfaces, different radios acting on all of these different interfaces and this guy has got some weight to it which means that again this thing is capable of doing all the processing and memory and access control all by itself. So that makes this a fat AP as well. So we take a look at this guy. This AP does everything that this one does, but it's a lot lighter. And that's because it doesn't have anywhere near the processing capability that this guy does. So there's a lot more internally to this one than this guy here. Well, that means that this guy needs a little bit of help. So this is a thin AP. Thin APs work with controllers. So this AP may be connected to the same set of switches that we're used to using, getting power over Ethernet from the switch, but it doesn't make a whole lot of decisions by itself. The config is pushed out to this guy. Typically, you don't console into one of these at all. Config is pushed out to these guys from the controller, and they're managed from the controller. 
So rather than running all around and handling the individual controllers or trying to figure out a way to console in, telnet in, SSH into one of these guys, you have all the APs talking to a controller and you have an interface to the controller itself. You can see all that remotely. Well, I think that'll about do it for this particular hands-on video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you get your feet wet doing some wireless networking. After all, remember, it is just networking. You can do this.